Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Lilybrook. Now, I've had some comments about chipping. So, we're going to do some chipping today. And you know I keep saying the worst case scenario on the third hole is missing right. Well, we're stood where you're not supposed to miss. As you can see, the green's through there. So you can see why I tee up on the right and aim down the left, because I don't want to be in here. So we're going to do some chipping stroke pitching. I mean, I, I don't quite know where the line is drawn between a chip and a pitch. I always think of a chip as something that goes along the ground and a pitch as something that goes through the air. So we're going to start over here, the right side of this bunker, and we're going to go over this bunker. I'm going to pick myself some lies, different lies, good ones, bad ones. Use the sand wedge, use the bounce. And then we'll work our way around the green and we'll, we'll play some other ones. Obviously with me camping out on a green, then I have to let other people pass. There's a four ball on the second green at the moment, so I've got to at least let them get, get past before I start chipping. There's a single lady on the second tee over there. So we're going to have some interruptions. The good thing about this is I don't have to do shot tracer. Now I've got one camera and I'm on my own. So I'm going to you know, do a chip from behind and then I'll move the camera around and I'll replicate the chip from the side as best I can and then try and stitch it together into a video. So let's get cracking. Right, before we get started, the sand wedge, I'm going to talk about the bounce and I'll tell you what the bounce is just in case you, hadn't, you don't know. The bounce is the fact that the trailing edge of your sand wedge is lower than the leading edge. If you open the face slightly, you increase the bounce. And what we do with the bounce in a bunker or in the rough is we're not putting the leading edge of the club into the ground. We're hitting the ground with the trailing edge of the club. And it's the build-up of material against this bounce, whether it be sand or grass, that lifts the club in the air, stops us digging in. So that's an important thing to remember. Right, I'm putting the camera down very low and on widescreen so that uh, you can see as much as you can. So this first shot, I've got to pop it over this bunker. Now, I think of this like a putt in that I'm not going to be flicking my wrists or anything like that. I'm just taking a long swing like a like a 70 foot putt really across the full length of a green. I'm going to open the face a little bit just to add a little bit of bounce. I'm not needing the loft really, it's the bounce. Right, on this one, I've sat it up. So there's a lot of air between the bottom of the ball and the soil. So I'm going to use a square face this time. Now because it's sat up, we're hitting high on the blade and there's not much mass at the top of the blade. So we do have to swing, we do have to accelerate and get that follow through going. Now there's only one way, or rather there's two ways I can dunk the ball in this bunker. The first way is to decelerate and stab at it. And the second way is to squeeze the life out of the club and pump up my forearms then I'm going to jab it and it's not going to get over. Let's push one right down to the bottom of the grass now. So this one's going to be hard down on the soil. This time we are going to use the leading edge rather than the trailing edge.
Right, I've got somebody coming through now, so let them through. Now what you've just seen there is uh, basic pitching over a bunker with three different lies. Key thing is to grip lightly and your backswing is the same length as your follow through. So you go in sort of like waist high to waist high and you keep this club head moving. The moment you decel or stop or stab at it, you're in the bunker. Now while I've got the sandwich in my hand, we'll go over to the reverse side of the green and we'll have a look at something else. Right, we've come off the back of the green here and we're on an upslope. Now for a short flag, I'd still use the sand wedge and I'd pop this up in the air and when it lands it should stop quite quickly. I'm still going to open the face because I want a bit of bounce because I don't want to dig into the soil here. So I'm just going to open the face a little bit and when I say a little bit, I do mean a little bit. It's only opening that face 5 or 10 degrees, we're not going mad, I'm pointing the club face at the sky. So this will go up in the air and should stop on a dime. The hard part is trusting that it's going to stop and actually swinging hard enough to get the ball to where the imaginary hole is. But what do you do, like here where the flag is right at the front, what do you do then? Hitting the ball through the air a long way is very hard to judge. So I've brought me my 7-iron. Now I'm not going to grip down the shaft. I think gripping down leads to chili dipping. So you don't have to hit this very hard. You've taken the loft off the club. You've got a seven iron in your hand. So it's, it's just a chip and run. It's like a long putt. and that goes low and it runs out. I haven't got it up to the flag because I wasn't concentrating but you can you can see the difference in the two shots and yet the swing length was probably about the same. So that's the important thing again light grip and the, uh, the backswing and the follow-through are more or less equal.
Right then, I'm glad I got all of them out. And I would say that there is plenty of sand in these bunkers. That's why I was swinging so hard. Other bunkers where you've got less sand and you're gonna hit bottom, then um, you need to swing a little softer really, a little more carefully, and perhaps back in your stance a little bit more. Right, I've got one more cheeky shot to show you before we lose the light. This is the last day before the clocks go back, so this is my last game of golf after work until certainly the uh, end of Feb. Let's clean the sand off this and then I'll show you this one last cheeky little shot. Right, we come down the bank and we don't have very far to go. So we need to pop this up and then when it lands on the green it stops dead. So I'm going to lay this completely flat and then I'm going to use a putting stroke. I'm not going to use any wrist whatsoever. This takes a bit of practice and I haven't done this for a while so this might not go well. And you do need a good lie. You can't do this with a bad lie. Now strangely, you can actually fire one right across the green with this. Just got to keep those wrists absolutely solid. Although I wouldn't really recommend trying to fly 18, 20 yards with that shot. There's Plenty of other shots to choose from.
And he holds the first one. Well, the moon's up, the sky's turning red over there. We are running out of daylight. Hope you enjoyed that. Now, chipping is a game within a game. And it's a game that you can play on your own or with your mates. You know, I've, I've betting on this. When you play a hole, when you finish the hole, throw a golf ball somewhere and have a, have a little bet on getting up and down or just getting closest. If you want to be good at chipping, you've got to look forward to chipping. If you're afraid of it, then you're going to grip the club too tight and you're not going to be very good. You'll hit, you'll hit fats and thins and especially going over a bunker, you'll chuff into a bunker. So it's a light grip. It's a decent backswing and it's a decent follow through. And you just collect the ball along the way, really. Now, personally, I prefer being in the rough to being uh, in the fairway on a tight lie. But, you know, that's just me. You might prefer being in the fairway than being in the rough, I don't know. But we're all different. I've used three clubs. I've used a 55 with nine degrees of bounce because I don't like that much bounce on my sand wedge. Although it would probably have helped me out of that bunker because there was so much sand in it. And I've used a pitching wedge at 46 and I've used a seven iron at it's a fairly traditional loft, I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter really, is it? It's a, it's a club to make the ball run. I've got a club to get over things and a club for medium length. God, this is getting heavy. But yeah, if you can dedicate some time to actually going out and doing some chipping, you'll get better at it. And try different things. You know, okay, start off with a medium length flat one where you work out the break of the green and play accordingly and then over the shoulder of a bunker where you're trying to lift it over the shoulder of the bunker or a false front and then chipping over a bunker and then chipping up to a green and then chipping down to a green figure out which club does it best for you that chipping down I use my pitching wedge and some of them still didn't run out very well Perhaps I could have used a 9-9. And you never finish learning. Basic splash shot. Don't worry too much about where the flag is to start with. Once you start getting that basic splash shot going, then you can worry about where the flag is. But the primary goal is get the ball on the green and roll in. Or if you're short-sided, get it on the green and not roll in. Yeah, I was going to play down the second, but I don't think I'm going to bother now. I might lose the ball. Anyway, cheerio. <laughs>